Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my talk on M stream, fast anomaly detection in multi aspect streams. Uh, I'm Siddharth and I'm a third year PhD student at National University of Singapore. So, this joint work with uh, Archit and Ritesh, who are undergraduates from IITs, and Taran is uh, an assistant professor at Purdue, and Brian is my advisor. So, uh, they Code for the project is open source on uh, GitHub and there's the link. So let's get started. The motivation for this uh, project was like, it came from anomaly detection and intrusion detection more specifically. So there have been a lot of uh, recent attacks on say GitHub. It has a 1.35 terabits per second attack with uh, more than from like thousand autonomous systems. And these kind of attacks, uh, they flood the targeted machine or the resource with uh, superfluous requests in an attempt to overload the systems. So you want to prevent something like that. So just like an example, suppose these are all normal nodes or like these are all the you know machines in the system which are communicating and suddenly three malicious or anomalous entities come in and they kind of uh, send a lot of Spurious edges uh, within a short span of time. So this behavior we want to detect, and this kind of you know a group kind of behavior where these kind of entities are coming in and attacking the system. So we want to detect something like this. So uh, this is the roadmap of the presentation. So uh, we'll briefly discuss the problem, like uh, like the formal problem, and then I'll uh, go deeper into the algorithm, the M stream work. And then we'll uh, briefly go over the related work in this area and then the experiments and finally some future directions. So informally the problem is that we have a record stream called R. So we'll be getting a new record at each time instant and this record, the motivatory application is intrusion detection, but it can be uh, like, for example, it can be some other kind of event log data where you have like a record at each time instant. So the time instant is also uh, up to the application and the user. It can be say seconds, minutes, like whatever we at your time instant. And uh, each record has like up to D dimensions. So it is multi aspect data. And uh, so we want something like, you know, group handling both uh, categorical as well as numeric attributes. So these kind of uh, these dimensions or features can either be categorical or numeric. And the output uh, for each record will be an anomaly score. So we give out an anomaly score for each record as and when the record comes. So we want real time kind of performance. So as and when the record comes, we want to give out an anomaly score. And this is done in a streaming scenario, streaming on an online scenario. So uh, basically you don't kind of take, like you don't kind of save your previous, all your previous data. So as and when your new record comes, you want to process it and give out an anomaly score there and then. So the contributions for this particular work are that uh, we we can do multi-aspect group anomaly detection where the data is multi-aspect as well as in a, uh, the anomalies are in a group form, group form. It's a streaming approach. So we have constant memory and constant update time for each record. So it's constant both with respect to the stream length as well as with respect to the number of dimensions. And uh, also, very beautifully, MSTV can capture correlation between the features. So I'll discuss that like after a few slides, how, we, how do we do that? And this example actually demonstrates uh, how, uh, what kind of anomalies we're trying to detect. So this is actually NetFlow data, which has time, source, IP, destination, IP, and the packet size. And uh, you can observe. So this is like multi-aspect data with anomalousness happening between time instant four and five. So within a short span of time, we got like a uh, very high number of records which were uh, like giving out suspicious features. So we want to detect something like this. And so this is like multi-aspect data with multiple dimensions. Some are categorical. And these are new value features. Some are categorical like IP addresses. And this happens within a short span of time. So this was something which we are uh, detecting here. So uh, the algorithm, so this is uh, like a brief background about Midas. So MStream was actually built on top of Midas and uh, Midas uses two things, a count min sketch and a chi-square test. 
So the Countman sketch is a streaming data structure. So this is the diagram representing a Countman sketch, which has hash functions. And for each hash function, like you can hash the value to a particular uh, bucket in for each hash function. And my does, uh, like so Countman sketch data structure has this wonderful theoretical guarantee where you can say uh, with probability at least minus one minus epsilon, we can only tolerate up to mu amount of error. So something like the 99% probability, we want the value to be correct within point, like say with point up and like only up to 0.5% error. So like Midas is uh, two of these data structures, S and A. So uh, like S is the total edges up to time t and A were the current edges at the time t and then it got retrieved these approximate counts of S and A. And this is the final normally score for each edge in MIDA. So it had just like two dimensional data. So this was the score. And then we kind of uh, extended it to multi dimensional setting. Now I'll discuss the M stream algorithm, dimensional features. So this is just like, you know, a brief uh, glimpse about our algorithm. So this is the stream which is coming in, stream of records. And it can have both real valued as well as categorical features. And then uh, we have a dimensionality reduction like a dimensionality reduction model which can reduce the dimensions. So this actually helps us later to you know uh, find the correlation between different features. So it may be possible that feature one is anomalous and uh, in a particular value, feature two is anomalous at a particular value, but we both of them are like have those individual anomalous values together combined, they're not actually anomalous. So something like one zero is anomalous, zero one is anomalous, but when both of them are one, it's not anomalous. So something like that will be prevented by this dimensionality reduction algorithm. And record hash and feature hash. So these are two uh, different parts. So for the feature hash, we actually take each individual feature into account, and then uh, we do some further processing. For the record hash, we consider the entire record as well. So here we are taking uh, after the dimension reduction. So whatever dimensions are remaining, we just take each dimension together, like each dimension individually and the, all the dimensions together. So we hash them in uh, like this, you know, uh, matrix kind of form where, uh, so you hash them in uh, for the record hash, it'll be kind of an LSH based hash. So you sim hash there and after this, so you calculate your normally scores. So I'll go into details about the feature hash first. So feature hash, here we are hashing each individual feature. So we have the feature of the record and we have like an output as the bucket index to map this particular value into. So if this rij, like this record index ij, so i is the record i and j is the feature j. So if it is categorical, we just like directly use a linear hash to hash it. If it is like a real valued, and in that case, we will first log transform it. This is just you know to get it into like more comfortable values and better hashing. We then normalize it in a streaming fashion. So we have a streaming min max, and after that, finally, we uh, like output it, output the bucket, like what is the bucketization done. And uh, so this is uh, like done from the B bucket. So this bucket B here is the number of buckets which we have. So these parameters are kind of uh, you know user customized based on the theoretical guarantees. So the record hash uh, is hashing the entire record. So into B buckets. So we divide the record into like two sub parts, the categorical part and the numeric part. First we hash the categorical part in a similar manner in just like a linear hash. And uh, like we just hash each individual feature of the categorical part and then take a summation and then a modulo of B. And then uh, for the numeric part, we take all the IDs and then we uh, like take it, take a dot product with a random vector. And then for each, we set each bit to one or zero depending on whether it is positive or not. And finally we take like for this bit set vector, we take the corresponding bucket number. And final bucket number for the entire record is the uh, sum of both the categorical and the numeric, uh, the like real uh, numeric part. And like, so we take the sum and then model V. This is the final algorithm where uh, you have like, we initialize these data structures for the record count and for the attribute count for each attribute. And we have like current record count and the current attribute count. So then finally, like for each, new record which is received.
we have a like a bucket for the feature hash and we have a bucket for the record hash so this feature hash bucket will be for all the features and this is this bucket is for one like one bucket for the entire record and finally we like update this count for the bucket and after that uh, we retrieve these updated counts and uh, finally the anomaly score is kind of like this it is derived in the uh, papers you can go and see that and then uh, we incorporate correlation between the features so this is uh, like the interesting part where how do we kind of you know reduce the dimensions in dimensionality reduction module so uh, our motivation for actually doing this uh, was twofold so you know the first the low dimensional re representations learned by these algorithms then incorporate correlation between different attributes of the record and also when you reduce the dimensions so it will result in faster processing so uh, we use three methods first was a principal component analysis where uh, like we use it because it actually requires only one major parameter to tune so the dimension of the projection space also this parameter can be easily set by uh, you know, the analysis of the explained uh, variance ratios of the principal components so this is just like an off the shelf algorithm for dimension reduction the other algorithm is an information bottleneck so uh, like i won't go into the details about the information bottleneck because it's slightly complicated to be covered in the time frame we have but uh, like in this like we kind of have the original information bottleneck and we map it to our setting where like from the original one we uh, kind of map it and we use uh, a neural network approach for the non linear information bottleneck the other more interesting um, like method which we use is an auto encoder so that is a neural network based approach for dimension reduction and an auto encoder uh, it actually consists of two parts so an encoder and a decoder the encoder compresses the input into a lower dimensional space uh, while the decoder reconstructs the input from the lower dimensional rep representation so we showed in the paper that uh, out of these three auto encoder actually works the best and for all the three methods we first learned the transformation using like a very small initial subset of 256 records from the stream and then we finally compute the embeddings for the subsequent records and pass them to m stream to detect the anomalies so time and memory complexity is uh, both are constant and uh, it's actually order like so w if w are the number of hash functions and b are the number of buckets and d is the number of dimensions in the in each record so our space complexity is actually proportional to order w by d because we have like d kind of these data structures and each data structure is order w d and time complexity is uh, just uh, proportional to so w d because w the number of hash functions that means you have to do a w times process w times whereas d is the number of uh, dimensions so for each dimension we are doing this thing the these are uh, the baselines which we used for comparing m stream and we have three popular cyclic learning algorithms elliptic and local outlet factor and isolation forest uh, we had three other uh, baselines which were doing anomaly detection in a streaming scenario for like multi aspect kind of streams sta master and sta so these are slightly older and we had like two recent uh, methods random cut forest and dense alert so uh, random cut forest is being used by amazon dense alert uh, was also quite a popular method uh, which was which was actually like a paper by a group at cmu so uh, we have like group anomalies real value features and because these are like some of them have to be streaming approaches so we had constant memory and constant update time so these three were not actually exact completely streaming and group anomalies so only dense alert could detect it somewhat uh, i'll discuss it like after a few slides how will it actually did real valued features so dense alert missed there but random cut forest could do it we could detect real valued features and m stream uh, was actually able to do all four the experiments so we have four data sets kdd cup data CIC, IDS, DOS, UNSW, and DDoS. So these are the uh, like 1.21 million records, 1.05, 2.57, 9 million records, and these are the respective anomaly percentages, and these are the number of features which each dataset has. So 
area under the curve so we observe like m stream ae is usually the best in some places m stream ib and bc are also good this is the raw m stream performance everything is more than 90 percent whereas rcf and densinet this slightly worse like these are like much more worse so yeah and densinet couldn't like complete on the data data set that's quite a large data set so Running times, we observe that uh, M stream is at least two orders of magnitude faster than all these baselines on all these data sets. So, like it's quite fast, and that kind of gives us real time performance. This is just like combining both the previous slides. So, AUC versus the running time. So, this is log scale. So, 1 10 100 thousand seconds, and this is uh, the AUC value. So, we see like we are quite better in the AUC with up to two orders of magnitude speed up. So that's uh, like quite a significant gain. Again, scalability. So, uh, scale, like MStream is scalable with increasing number of records, hash functions, dimensions, and this is the running time for processing one record. So, like, so if it, like, the running time for one record is less than 10 microseconds for around these many records. So, this is the frequency graph. And it's scalable. So then this is the this slightly interesting part where we try to discover anomalies on a real world data set where we say uh, like we kind of plot the normalized anomaly scores over time using all the baselines and methods like the M3 methods and we visualize the records uh, for visualizing we aggregate the records occurring at each minute by taking the maximum anomaly score for that minute and this is done for a total of around 565 minutes and then the ground truth values are indicated by this 0 or 1 like the normal is here and 1 is an anomaly and so local outlier factor and dense alert it misses a lot of anomalies whereas elliptic envelope uh, isolation forest and random cut forest they output uh, many high scores which are unrelated to a lot of attacks so Mstream does quite well and this G is actually a group probably where which Mstream was able to detect and elliptic envelope and uh, local outlier factor and isolation forest. So these three miss it. Dense alert and RCF are able to partially catch it but they are also not fully effective in high dimensional data sets. And also uh, Mstream estimates the feature specific anomaly scores before aggregating, right? So uh, like before we are aggregating for each feature, we are calculating the score. So it is actually interpretable because we know which feature is anomalous by analyzing that score. So for a given anomaly, we can rank these features according to their scores and then we can explain which features are more responsible so for the anomalousness. So we found that this E point is actually an anomaly that occurred due to a specific feature which matched uh, what their ground truth or their super or like what the actual uh, results were were using supervised learning approaches so we like ours is an unsupervised algorithm whereas by that we could you know interpret what is the anomalous feature so uh, finally we will just like briefly discuss the future work so we can have semi supervision on these kind of things where we know okay this particular record is definitely anomalous this is definitely not anomalous so how can we incorporate that uh, how do we take few labels into consideration where we know the ground truth for few labels and how can we you know work on that and finally uh, we can generate anomalous data so uh, that'll be interesting if we can uh, you know for this entire domain if we can generate anomalous data in a very fast manner so because anomaly detection usually suffers from this problem of lack of data finally just to conclude so uh, we could do multi-aspect group anomaly detection with both categorical and numeric attributes. We had a streaming approach with constant memory and update time, and we were effective with real-world uh, data sets, and we captured the correlation between features. So this is the paper on archive, and this is the GitHub repository. So, thank you. Thank you for your time.